what do you think is like the most exciting area of research for aging right now? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you always think the most exciting thing is what you're working on. But, oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I think there's, you know, the field has gotten to the point now where we've, we've proven that we can extend health span. And we've shown that with senolytics, we've, we've shown that with things that target mitochondria, things that may target the epigenome, improve metabolism like metformin. So, so the next step is, is, can we actually start to rejuvenate tissues? Can you actually slow aging, but even more so, can we actually start to reverse it? And I don't want to use the word reverse because I don't think we're ever going to go from being 80 to 40. But there is evidence that through what are what's called partial reprogramming, the expression of what are called Yamanaka factors that uh, Dr. Yamanaka won a Nobel Prize for identifying them, they actually can take a, a normal cell and make it more like a stem cell. And it's been shown that if you, you activate these factors that do the reprogramming for just a short period of time, it seems to reset the aging clock, at least in mice. So there's a company that was started, Altos Labs, it's gotten a lot of publicity, but it's hired a number of experts in this reprogramming process. And, and the, the goal is, is how to do this in a safe and efficient manner that kind of re partially reprogram cells, not back to a stem cell, but to a younger state. So it's just a little bit of reprogramming, but not too far because we don't want to be one big stem cell. And so if we could do that, it, it might mean that we can start to repair some of the damage that has occurred in different tissues. I don't think we're going to be able to re reprogram all cells and all tissues. So there's always going to be something that's not going to be as young as the rest of you. But I think this partial reprogramming kind of restoring youthfulness uh, will, will allow slowing of aging. Um, it may extend lifespan uh, you know, further than, than currently is uh, you know, able to do so. So, uh, so I think that's kind of the next big step. Is it really gonna be feasible? It works in mice, but you know, we're gonna be able to do this in humans and do it safely. But there's a lot of money being put into this space. And so I, I think that could be the next big breakthrough. One thought I had about uh, the, the reprogramming is, so you're still getting DNA damage, right? You still, so it, it right. re, reprogramming reprograms the epigenome, right? It doesn't reprogram the, the genome. So right. if, so that you'll still get the same level of damage build up. Is that correct? Right. So it, it's a, a great question and a great point <laughs> that you make is that, you know, so, so, you know, having just everything you just said, the question is why then do our mice healthier and age slower? And so uh, if you do this partial reprogram, so they made transgenic mice that have these Yamanaka factors and they turn them on for a little brief period of time and they turn them off and they turn them on and turn them off. So an hypothesis without any data is that it's not taking all cells and reprogramming a little bit it's actually taking a few cells and reprogramming a little bit further. And it's those healthier cells now start releasing vesicles, other factors, uh, maybe are, are making less inflammatory factors because there may be less senescence. And then that has effects on, on other cells. So it's not, it's not that you're reprogramming 100% of the cells, you reprogram 1% or 0.1% to a level where now it's more youthful and is able to then have these positive effects in other tissues. So it's like putting, let's say, putting the young immune system into an old mouse. So if you reprogram just enough cells, that youthfulness has secondary effects on distant cells. So I, because I think you're right, if you take all these cells with damage, DNA damage, mutations, et cetera, do you want to make them all young and healthy looking because they have that damage? So it's going to be a trade off. And that's the reason why I think this is not going to be. The way to make us live forever. But again, I think it's going to give us an additional certain number of years of healthy lifespan. But the risk is always this is going to lead to a higher rate of cancer. And that's always a concern. And so, you know, that's the reason we, we do these things and we do clinical trials as safely as possible because there is a risk. But, so, but, you know, but here the risk benefit is such that if this really does work, it could have a dramatic effect on, on human health. Yes. Not just clearing senescent cells, but kind of reprogramming a number of cells to make them more youthful. One question that I have, so your somatic cells are getting DNA damage, right? Right. 
but surely your germ cells are also getting DNA damage because I mean, there's, there's still cells, right? Right. So how come when we have a, like an offspring, they start from scratch and, but they don't seem to have that DNA damage. Right. I think you're going to enter into an area of which I'm probably not <laughs> as knowledgeable to comment, but um, I, what, what I can say is that if you treat older mice that are past their child or baby mouse rearing age with senolytics, you can extend the period that they can have pups. And it's because there appears to be a lot of senescence within, within the ovary. And so by reducing the senescent burden, it, it can extend the childbearing years. So we, we know that you can improve, you know, that, that that leads to longer fertility. The question now is whether there's going to be a higher chance of, of, of you know, birth defects associated with that. Um, I think it's known that germ cells have increased DNA repair capacity. So I think that, you know, they've evolved our germ cells to, to, to protect the genome because of the risk. If you don't protect it, the things that can go wrong and, and what that can do. So I think germ cells are protected for longer, but yes, in older people, there's an increase in damage and there's an increase in birth defects associated with that. And, you know, so if you're increasing childbearing years, the periods of fertility in women, is that going to be a good thing or not? But it does appear that, that you know, senolytics and some of these other approaches for extending health span will actually extend um, the period that women can, can give birth, which you could argue both ways if that's good or bad. But uh, it, it's interesting. Now, you know, again, why are germ cells protected and they seem to be normal? A lot of people think that's due to the epigenome being modified. In, in ways to make it more youthful, which also allows for better repair of DNA damage. Doesn't change mutations if there's a mutation there, but it can maybe uh, improve repair of damage without mutation. Okay, thank you. So, and that was kind of an unfair question, that's true. Um, that's okay. <laughs> it was a good question though. Uh, one last question. Could you share what you do personally in, for kind of preserving your longevity? <laughs> I don't do enough. It's, uh, I'm, uh, I've, I've always been one that exercises, in fr not infrequently, but in spurts, so weekends and such. I don't have a daily exercise routine like I should. I do bike to work. But I think exercise, I think eating healthily. Um, I'm of the belief that a couple of glasses of red wine are good for you and not bad for you. Um, I take the senolytic facetin because we have shown it's safe in mice and there's a number of clinical trials and it seems to have a benefit. So I take uh, facetin. Um, I did take metformin, but the prescription I had uh, ran out and I didn't find a physician to renew the prescription. So, uh, you know, it's a cheap drug. It seems to be very effective, but you need a prescription for metformin. Um, and I've considered taking um, NAD precursors, haven't done it. Uh, some people take a lot of resveratrol. Uh, I think facetin is probably better than resveratrol. But, um, but so that's what I take at this point. Um, whether I'll start taking more drugs uh, as I get older, have more ailments, or think I could have more ailments, I don't know. But it's, it's facetin exercise and trying to eat in a healthy way. Um, right. And red wine. And red wine, but nothing to excess. That's nothing. the key, <laughs> nothing to excess. And that includes exercise too. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, uh, yeah. Dr. Robert. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate so, it. Where can people follow you and your work? Yes, so we uh, we have been very slow again, our institute's website up and going, but uh, we are finally putting together both an institute website and then personal faculty websites that have up-to-date information. And we are in the process of trying to put together a newsletter that we can distribute that kind of highlights our research, but highlights other areas of research in the aging space. So as, hopefully that will become available soon. Um, but at this point, the Institute of Biology of Aging and Metabolism, University of Minnesota, it's called IBAM. You can Google it and find it, but we have a lot of information about aging there. Um, and then I follow their people that like to tweet. Uh, I'm not a tweeter, but uh, David Sinclair and others, they, they do. And many people follow them because they highlight papers and interesting discoveries and interesting clinical trials. So I actually follow David Sinclair's Twitter account. 
Uh, and there are others out there too that, that do this. But it's our Institute's website is what I would suggest. Okay, excellent. Yes, we will link to that. Okay, so Dr. Romans, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, well, thank you, Richard. I enjoyed it. it was a very nice discussion. Mm -hmm.